Hello everyone, happy evening, a very good evening. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. A quick nod whether the audio visual is all good. All right, I think uh, you can see me and hear me. So happy evening, everyone. A very good evening and welcome to the today's YouTube live session. I think it's been very long that we are meeting on this channel. So uh, some family commitments where I was busy and I hope we'll be meeting often now. So today we have fast five endocrinology MCQs. Uh, some very, very interesting MCQs, which will be our brain exercises for today. Right. So let's quickly see the fast five clinical MCQs. You know, I've always told you that I believe a lot in uh, having MCQ practice, learning retrograde with MCQs, because I think that helps us remember stuff for a longer time. Right. Aaj, vitamin K NF100 topic uh, aaj nahi hoga. It is tomorrow 8 a.m on the an academy neat pg youtube channel okay so uh, tomorrow we would be meeting at 8 a.m all right uh, let me tell you the plan for tomorrow that is the uh, 28th of april uh, tomorrow we would be meeting at 8 a.m uh, for the nf100 next episode where we would be discussing vitamins and after that uh, uh, tomorrow at uh, 9 p.m uh, we will have the kbmd on the an academy app uh, right, the free life class and that's going to be your KBMD that we will have top 10 mnemonics mixed bag MCQs that we are doing. So we will have KBMD uh, tomorrow. So 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. is when we are going to meet tomorrow. Right. I hope. Yes, 8 a.m. Now you have your uh, exam coming up at which is going to be in the morning at 9. So it's better that we start waking up early. Okay. All right, and um, today we have endocrinology fast five MCQs. If there's any particular topic that's on your mind, please let me know uh, so that I can work upon it. We have the next mnemonics crash course. I hope all of you are aware of that. We are doing the last minute revision sort of thing, the mnemonics crash course on the Unacademy app, special classes and plus classes. Uh, the next that we would be doing is all the volatile stuff in surgery. Right, that is day after tomorrow, that is on 29th April at 12 p.m. Right, at 12 p.m. on the Unacademy app again, which is a special class, okay, which is a special class. 8 a.m. is too early. Actually, it's early for me as well, but I would be stretching myself up uh, for you guys. So I think you can also do that, right? Okay, so let's uh, start with the discussion of the MCQs. This is the first one. Please read the question. These are all clinical lengthy MCQs to give you practice of this. Because as I say, be prepared for the worst. So let's see how many of you get this one right. Episode 55 to 62. Thank you, Kahani Shukla, for reminding me. I'll update that tonight. Okay, the links of the rest of the NF100. Thank you so much, Mad Max. That, that video is straight out from the heart. Uh, Asset-based disorders we'll definitely do before the INICD because it's a very, very important topic. Okay, what do you think is the answer to this? Amazing, I see some uh, correct answers pouring in. That's super awesome. Yes, the correct answer here is vaginal candidiasis. Why? Because uh, look at the, you know, whenever you have such lengthy MCQs, rather than just skipping them, getting scared by them, the best thing to do is read the last two lines of the questions, okay? Uh, many times you would be able to get the crux out of that, the last two lines. You know, every examiner knows that it's not possible to read such lengthy questions in the examination hall. So always read the last two lines. 
this patient is at greatest risk for which of the following adverse effect of this new drug and what is the new drug read the second last line empagliflozin is added to her diabetes regimen so basically it is your uh, one line question uh, okay itself which is just asking what is the side effect that we see with empagliflozin now all these gliflozins recently we have discussed the diabetes mellitus drugs right all these gliflozins flows in flow is your urine flow okay so they inhibit in the kidney the urine flow that is basically your sglt2 inhibitors we have two kidneys it is sglt2 inhibitor sodium glucose transporters so the glucose in the urine increases glucose in the urine increases that is the food for the bacteria the urine glucose and that is why it increases the risk of uti it increases the risk of genital infections right this is how a simple one liner question can be put across as a scary lengthy question right so do not get trapped by it it is vaginal candidiasis right it is vaginal candidiasis all right which drugs used in diabetes they cause uh, hypoglycemia which drugs used in diabetes mellitus they cause hypoglycemia basically anything which increases the insulin your incretins like your glp analogs all uh, right that is exenatide insulin sulfonyl ureas these are the ones which will cause hypoglycemia okay these are the ones which will cause hypoglycemia tell me at least one drug which causes lipodystrophy any drug in pharma which clicks your mind when you read about lipodystrophy protease inhibitors used in antiretroviral therapy right then the next one a granulocytosis when i see this the first drug that comes to my mind is clozapine right remember forget that count slow c l o count slow close up in count slow that means it causes uh, a granulocytosis right it causes a granulocytosis so that was the first question now let's go to the next question here okay this is your next question please start answering now i would also suggest another trick to solve such very very lengthy mcqs is read the last line then have a look at the options because options is what will tell you that what this question is related to which topic so when you read red proto oncogene merlin menin vhl you try to look in the question the respective features right so go retrograde from options to the questions as well okay i wait to wait see mixed answers here who has got it right okay yashasvi neeraj yen all right so i see uh, someone marking as c someone marking as a so there's basically a confusion between a and c now see the first thing that i want you to uh, realize here is the option is your inactivation of red proto oncogene it is not the gain of function of red proto oncogene why is it important i'll tell you see the question is this patient is most likely to have which of the following protein abnormalities right and what does the patient have uh, second last line i see ultrasound multiple kidney stones when i see this with the options here what clicks my mind is with the options hyperparathyroidism right which increases the calcium deposited in the kidney leading to stones so one is hyperparathyroidism that i start thinking of so when i see that i automatically rule out the option that is your merlin where is merlin protein expression seen merlin is your merlin altered merlin protein expression merlin is neurofibromatosis 2 does it have hyperparathyroidism no what does nf2 have nf2 2 is bilateral vestibular schwannoma is very very important ocular finding is juvenile cataract very important and then there is mismi multiple intracranial schwannomas meningiomas and there are ependymomas right 
Then you have VHL tumor suppressor mutation of VHL. Does it have hyperparathyroidism? No. It has the multiple cyst. It has the hemangioblastoma, cerebellar hemangioblastoma. It can have RCC, right? It can have renal cell carcinoma, clear cell subtype, right? Clear cell subtype. Inactivation of RET proto-oncogene, it leads to which condition? Does that lead to your, uh, does that lead basically? So in the RET proto-oncogene, you have loss of function mutation, you have gain of function mutation. Your MEN2 is your gain of function mutation of RET. Where is this RET proto-oncogene located? RET, RET ULTA TER, it is your chromosome number 10. This is the gene which controls the neural crest cell migration. Okay, it controls the neural crest cell migration. So, if there is no neural crest cell migration, loss of function mutation, it is ganglia which is not formed. So, that leads to a ganglionic megacolon. That's basically your Hirschsprung's disease. It is gain of function of men to of red which causes your men to. That is why we have medullary thyroid carcinoma because your parafollicular C cells, they develop from neural crest cell. That is why in men too, we have pheochromocytoma because you have the adrenal medulla. It is a tumor of adrenal medulla which develops from the neural crest cell, right? So please remember this point that basically red loss of function is Hirschsprung's disease. Gain of function is men too. You have medullary thyroid cancer, pheochromocytoma because it's your parafollicular C cells and it is adrenal medulla. So option one is also out because basically this is Hirschsprung's disease. There's no hyperparathyroidism here. So we have already ruled out the three options and I'm left with one option that is menin. Even without reading the entire question, we have still come to the right answer. You know, this is what is the smart tricks that I talk about when I say that how toppers score good, right? So, menin is basically your men one, right? Your men one. What comes in your men one? What comes in men one? So, men one is three P's. Start from up. That is your pituitary. Then the next one you have parathyroid and the next one is pancreas. There is no pheochromocytoma. Why? Because remember pheochromocytoma, adrenal medulla, NCC, it is your retvala. This is a component of men 2, not of men 1. Now going to the question here, do we have uh, pituitary? Do we have pituitary here? Yes. So, we have the history of prolactinoma. So, pituitary is there. There are peptic ulcers, right, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. Gastrinoma is very common. That leading to peptic ulcers. And there is your kidney stones. So, the three Ps, pituitary, parathyroid, pancreas, that fits into your MEN1, right? So, this is the MEN1. So, the answer is altered menin. Okay, the answer is altered menin. Is this clear with everyone how you score more by using the smart tricks? Rolling out the options, reading the last two lines are very, very important cheat codes to score more. Okay, let's go to the next question. Okay, so this is a reminder basically for the crash course on mnemonics for uh, everyone who would like to do the last minute revision of mnemonics of various subjects. Uh, we are uh, doing it on the Unacademy app. We have started from April 20. The next class is on uh, uh, April 29, 12 p.m. Surgery, volatile stuff, classification, scores, and uh, stagings, all of those we would be seeing. And also on Unacademy, we have this 20% uh, off on subscriptions till tomorrow. You can uh, use my code, or basically you can use my code Dr. Nikita while subscribing on the Unacademy app and that will give you additional 20% off only till tomorrow. Okay, it's available only till tomorrow. We are starting the mnemonics crash course on the plus that is for the subscribers from 2nd of May to 13th of May, right? Very, very high yield revision before the exam. Okay, let's go to the next question. Tell me what do you think would be answer to this one?
let's see who gets it right the first. Very good. Carnivosi is uh, correct. Got it right the first. The answer here is hydrochlorothiazide therapy. The answer is hydrochlorothiazide therapy. Why? Again, very lengthy questions. Look at the last two lines. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in management? What do we have? The urine osmolality does not change after three hours despite the no fluid intake or after administration of desmopressin. So the question itself is telling you that even after giving desmopressin, nothing is changing, right? Nothing is changing. So is there a point in giving, uh, is there a point in giving your uh, desmopressin? No, because it's not changing anything. So desmopressin is out, right? Desmopressin is out. Fluid deprivation is not changing anything. So this is not just your routine polydipsia, right? This patient has excessive thirst. There is frequent urge to urinate. Whenever you have a patient with polyuria, polydipsia, think of diabetes, right? Be it diabetes mellitus or be it diabetes insipidus, right? So here, basically you have, you can see from the options, uh, you know, what do we have here is this patient has polyuria, there is polydipsia, all those is given and even with desmopressin, nothing is changing. I Okay, I forgot to add the table here. Actually, we had a table here which, which talked about, so that is missing here, serum osmolality and urine osmolality. Okay, about the question, there was this table, the information given on serum osmolality and urine osmolality. So one thing we know that this is not central diabetes insipidus. If I tell you that the diagnosis is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, then what will happen to serum osmolality and urine osmolality? What happens in your diabetes insipidus? Okay, in diabetes insipidus, what will you see with serum osmolality and urine osmolality? Diabetes insipidus means ADH is less. There is anti-anti diuresis. That means so basically there is diuresis a lot of water is going out right so in the urine the lot of water is going out the urine osmolality is less the serum osmolality is high right so in the table it was mentioned that serum osmolality is 312 and urine osmolality is 190 okay it is 190 right so this is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus and that is why the answer here is hydrochlorothiazide, which is the drug of choice in nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, right? So in diabetes insipidus, central, nephrogenic, and lithium-induced diabetes insipidus. What is the drug of choice? Central, ADH is less, give external ADH, that is give desmopressin. Nephrogenic, no point of giving desmopressin, it's already your high ADH levels. It is the resistance, like you have insulin resistance with high insulin. This is ADH resistance with high ADH. So the drug of choice here is thiazides. With lithium-induced diabetes insipidus, we give amyloride. So remember, lithium Li is Li. We give amyloride because thiazides, they increase the toxicity of lithium. Okay, thiazides increase the toxicity of lithium. So we do not give thiazides in lithium-induced diabetes insipidus. All right. How do we differentiate whether this is actually a, a diabetes insipidus or this is polydipsia that the patient has? Fluid deprivation test, right? If, if the ADH is normal with the fluid deprivation, the ADH will be secreted. So basically remember that uh, what do we need to do is if the serum osmolality is less, the patient is drinking a lot of water, that is your polydipsia. If the serum osmolality is high, that means there is polyuria there happening. We need to do your water deprivation test and diabetes insipidus to classify 
you have high levels in nephrogenic diabetes insipidus there is no change by giving external desmopressin in central there is a problem in the secretion so adh levels would be low when you give external then it comes to normal basically the urine osmolality increases okay the urine osmolality increases all right so remember that in diabetes insipidus the serum osmolality is high it's more than 300 so whether it is central diabetes insipidus nephrogenic the serum osmolality is high in polydipsia the serum osmolality is low the urine osmolality is low in your diabetes insipidus right and when you give external the osmolality increases in central it does not increase in your nephrogenic okay i know it's not clear but i've mentioned already what is written here okay let's go to the next question let's see who gets this right the first Uh, am I able to see the live chat? Okay. I see many of you answering it as B. Majority are answering it as B. Why? Uh, someone has got it right. C, absolutely right. I think one person has got it right. Kutu Datta, then Dr. Meron Baby, Stringer Bell. The answer here is not B, it is your C, which is perform radiotherapy of the pituitary. For many of you who are answering as B, administer metirapone, metirapone, however you want to pronounce it. What is metirapone? See, metirapone is basically, it inhibits your steroid synthesis in the adrenal gland, right? It is a drug used for medical adrenalectomy right this is the drug which is used for medical adrenalectomy okay so metirapone is basically used for medical adrenalectomy it inhibits your steroid synthesis in the adrenal gland now in this question what do we have is the patient has undergone bilateral adrenalectomy the patient was has already undergone adrenalectomy so is there a point in giving metirapone no now after adrenalectomy there is hyperpigmentation of the skin bitemporal visual field defects acth is high so we also know that whenever the acth is high right whenever the acth levels increases it also increases your msh because both of them basically come from the same precursor protein when the ACTH increases, along with that comes MSH. It's like ek ke saath ek free. ACTH ke saath MSH free. So when ACTH increases, this increases, and that is why there is hyperpigmentation. So always remember, like your Addison's disease, which is basically your adrenal AD, adrenal deficiency. It stimulates your ACTH that leads to your hyperpigmentation. Here. After adrenalectomy, no steroids there stimulating the ACTH. So the ACTH secreting cells are increased. That leads to the increased a mass in the pituitary. That leads to your optic chiasma compression. That leads to your bitemporal hemianopia. Right, the pituitary lesions presenting with bitemporal hemianopia. That is what is mentioned here. The patient has hyperpigmentation and bitemporal whenever there is bitemporal visual field defects you should always think of a pituitary mass right you should always think of a pituitary mass so basically what is the diagnosis here very good serena the diagnosis here kanimozi good this is nelson syndrome right basically this is nelson syndrome what is nelson syndrome after adrenalectomy the proliferation of the ACTH secreting cells leading to the pituitary mass, that is your 
Nelson syndrome. So basically, we want to treat this pituitary mass. So that is why the answer is radiotherapy of the pituitary. Metiraphone will not be useful here. Where do we use bromocryptin? Bromocryptin is a D2 agonist or D2 antagonist. Bromocryptin is D2 agonist or D2 antagonist. It is a D2 agonist. And dopamine is your prolactin inhibiting hormone. So basically it inhibits your prolactin in prolactinoma. Right. It's used in prolactinoma. All right. Reduced dose of glucocorticoids. This will be used when there is excess hydrogenic exogenous glucocorticoids that we have given. Okay. So that was question number four. Remember this Nelson syndrome, pituitary uh, proliferation and we need to do radiotherapy. Okay, next question. That's the last question. What do you think is answer to this? Uh, an interesting question here. What do you think is the answer to this one? Um, did I see the answer? Somatostatin? Okay. All right, so majority of you say somatostatin, some are confused with glucagon and gastrin. The correct answer here is somatostatin. Which of the following substances is most likely to be increased in this patient? So somatostatin, as the term says, it is a statin. It is static for majority of the hormones in the body. So basically, it inhibits your insulin also. So that leads to hyperglycemia. That is what this patient has. Fasting glucose 186. It inhibits your cholecystokinin. Cholecystokinin, motility of gallbladder affected. So there are these gallstones. That is what is mentioned here. Round ecogenic foci with posterior acoustic shadowing. When you have posterior acoustic shadowing, it tells you that it is gallstones. Gallstones show the posterior acoustic shadowing. Whenever in the question you have foul smelling greasy stools, what does that indicate basically? It indicates your steatorrhea and steatorrhea, think of your pancreatic enzymes being inhibited, right? The pancreatic enzymes being inhibited that leads to your steatorrhea. That is why this is your somatostatin. If it would have been glucagon, serotonin or gastrin, what would you see in that case? If it was glucagon, right, what are the keywords? Glucagon, serotonin, and gastrin. If it was glucagonoma, very, very important. Necrolytic, what do you see with your, uh, what do you see with your glucagonoma? Necrolytic migratory erythema, very, very important point. Necrolytic migratory erythema is what is seen with glucagonoma, right? Serotonin is high in your carcinoid tumors and carcinoid presence with your diarrhea and flushing. Very, very important. There is diarrhea with flushing. Tricuspid valve is affected. It leads to tricuspid regurgitation, right? Gastrin increases your stomach acid secretion, leads to your peptic ulcer disease, resistant ulcers, which is not mentioned here, right? So the answer here is, Somatostatin, which is basically secreted by the pancreatic delta cells, which inhibits your insulin, cholecystokinin, pancreatic enzymes, leading to steatorrhea. So this is the classical triad that you have, hyperglycemia, gallstones, and steatorrhea. So the answer is 
somatostatin okay the answer is somatostatin all right so that were about the fast five critical mcqs for today uh do you remember what did we discuss let's have a quick review of the fast five the five concepts that we have learned today what was the first one your glee flozins that is basically your stlt2 inhibitors they increase your uti risk and even vaginal candidiasis right the patient is at risk of vaginal candidiasis okay then the next one what was the next question that we had first was glee flozin what was the next question that we had second question right menin vara right basically it was menin okay the second question was menin remember menin is men1 men1 is the three p's starting from above that is your pituitary then parathyroid and there is pancreas gastrinoma zollinger ellison syndrome okay what is the next one what was the next question that we had diabetes insipidus right diabetes insipidus which is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus it will have increased adh levels there will be no response to desmopressin because already the adh is high the treatment is with hydrochlorothiazide that is basically your thiazides are the drug of choice in nephrogenic diabetes insipidus the next question was on nelson syndrome after adrenalectomy right after adrenalectomy the nelson syndrome which increases the acth leads to hyperpigmentation patient will have visual field defects we need to do radiation therapy for the pituitary and the last one when you have somatostatinoma it increases your glucose levels because it inhibits insulin it leads to gallstones because it inhibits cholecystokinin and what else does it leads to steatorrhea because it inhibits your pancreatic enzymes okay because it inhibits your pancreatic enzymes all right so those were the fast five clinical mcqs in endocrinology i hope you have enjoyed it thank you so much for joining in we will have another session uh, tomorrow all right and till then goodbye take care and keep studying keep revising and keep winning thank you so 